Talent Talk Tuesdays is all about harnessing your God-given talents to live with greater clarity, purpose, and joy. You are wonderfully made, my friends. May all we do be for God's glory. Welcome to Talent Talk Tuesdays. I'm your host, Lisa Maladnik, and today you're going to learn about doing something powerful, unshackling your greatest gifts. And I don't just mean learning to develop and enjoy your gifts and talents. That's very important work to do, and I'm all about it. But I mean unshackling in an important spiritual sense. In fact, this lesson is about being wise in our battle against a cunning adversary who sees God's beautiful design in us and wants to crush it. And he is wily. Today's lesson is about not being tricked into giving up your unique role in God's plan for saving the world not allowing the enemy to use a misunderstanding of your own being to silence and disempower you. This is extremely common. Now here's the crux of it. Our spiritual enemy attacks our greatest gifts. I'm pausing to let you just hear that. Your greatest gifts, my friends, those are where he goes first. He does so routinely, strategically, subtly, and sometimes even savagely. And this goes on our whole lives. So the enemy is very effective at getting us to believe that our gifts are not gifts. They are uh, shameful, embarrassing, hopelessly broken quirks or even faults. And if we're not wise to his purposes, we start to believe that when we hide our gifts, minimize them, even denigrate them, when we bury those precious God-given talents in the ground, remember that parable, that we're being humble. It's one of his best tricks. And we get worried that if we appreciate our gifts or any aspect of our own being and use it to and increase it to do powerful God glorifying works, that we're just being vain or selfish or worse. He really can mess with our heads. So as usual, to illustrate, I'm going to tell you a true story. In this podcast, I will sometimes tell you case histories with permission of of my clients or people that I know, but I will also very often use myself so I don't have to hold anything back. And that's also so I can just personally be transparent and vulnerable about the dynamics of a particular lesson because I'm always doing this work for myself, not just for clients. So as I tell my story, I'd like you to listen for some steps, and I don't expect you to memorize these. I'm going to go over them a couple of times, but it starts like this. A desire to please God. Let's just say that's this big, beautiful place in us. But it gets hit with a misunderstanding of a talent, some often multiple talents, and it falls into fears that result from that misunderstanding. And then false shame starts to sound like the reality of the situation. Okay. Now, what can happen is the discovery of the truth of your talents which then shifts you into a whole whole new freer place where you have confidence in God's design, greater love and appreciation for God, and then new freedom to love and serve with those gifts and the ability to help others do the same, and also confirmation of your mission and purpose. I know that's a lot to throw at you. I'm going to go over it again. Okay, starts with your desire to please God, and then a misunderstanding, a lie about your talents, and I'm going to talk about myself, about my own talents that took me or or threatened to take me off course from my life. It generated fear and false shame that sounded real, and it made it harder for me to get back to that beautiful center place of just wanting to please God, okay? But then at a certain point, I discovered the truth of those talents, of course, not fully, completely the way God knows it, but a lot more of it, right? And a recognition of the lies and of their purpose even. Once you'd expose a lie, you can kind of see what it's there for. And then new confidence in God, his designs, his purpose for me, so which just generated so much gratitude and greater love and confidence of being loved by God, which set me free to serve, help others, and confirmed that I was actually on the right track, having been attacked in those gifts. Okay? I know that's a lot, but here's my story. In 2015, I had this amazing experience of writing my first full-length book, which was about authentic beauty and aging, and it won an award and was a bestseller. Wow. So suddenly I was getting a lot more invitations to speak at events and appear on Catholic TV and radio. And as much as I loved the research and the writing, even better was having that heart experience of connecting with audiences. 
I would show up vulnerable and real, share my faith, talk about hard things, and tie it all to God's redemptive grace. Receive incredible waves of affirmation and blessing from audiences. The way women resonated with me, the way they wanted to share their own stories, and how our connection with each other, however brief, brought them greater hope and blessed me immeasurably. It was quite beautiful. And over the course of the next few years, I spent a lot of my time traveling, speaking, giving interviews, and it was wonderful. But I had a problem, <laughs> a nagging worry that wouldn't leave me alone. I didn't realize at the time that it was the voice of the enemy. It went something like this. You're such a know-it-all. You just have to be the center of attention, don't you? If you really wanted to be holy, you'd be silent. So I kept going, I kept walking through the door as God was opening, but I was stressed and worried about it. And, and remember, this went on for years. I prayed about it, of course. I poured out my heart to God, in fact, and said many times, Lord, if anything about this, the public speaking, the traveling, any of it is not pleasing to you, if it's sinful, if it's just my vanity, please take it away. If you don't want it, I don't want it either. Help me. That's how bad the attack was. I was, I was really, freaking out inside even though outside everything seemed to be going well and that went on a long time but anyway so god kept blessing my efforts and giving me encouragement but this interior battle was going on now that was 2015 when that started but it was ongoing for several years now i've been coaching since 2018 but in 2020 i got certified by gallup to use the clifton strengths that you hear me talk about all the time and that was a game changer for me on every level. That's why I'm such a geek about it. And as I said last week, once I got trained, I couldn't wait to understand my talents through the lens of my Catholic faith, because I knew that whatever God made was good and that it needed prayer and virtue and sacramental life, of course, to make it holy, for sure, but that it was made by him with love and so that it had to be beautiful and purposed for the good. So I just couldn't wait to really look at how God had gifted me and how that might fit into and clarify his plans for my life. So when I prayerfully dug into my talents, and I really did pray over all this information of this Gallup research, and I saw that my gifts made me a natural teacher and public speaker, that I was wired for human connection and for being able to ignite others. I had a profound moment of being released from the enemy's lies. Now, I love unbound ministry, I believe in exorcism, all those things. This doesn't replace any of that. This was just a place where the truth being spoken into my being through various means and centered in that prayerful way on the Gallup research, just spoke truth to the back to the enemy's lies and crushed the lies. So God used that, it was God's grace, of course, it wasn't Gallup. But knowing what the lie was and seeing its purpose and saying, oh, if God wired me to do this, of course I'm supposed to do this. I can be confident to do these things with love and energy and commitment. And I can just know that those are lies and they just fell away. They stopped bothering me, okay? So it allowed me to say yes to God, to his design. It was my fiat moment. And then to be able to just confidently live it out with humble confidence, right? In his design and his purposes. But to say no, to hide those gifts and not use them for his glory would have been a huge mistake. So I'm just glad I hung on by my toenails through all of that difficulty. But from that moment on, I've been certain that I'm called to do the very work that energizes, motivates, and fulfills me. Not just the public speaking, but other talents too. Things that make coaching a joy for me and have helped others find their joy and their unique purpose. So you can see why the enemy wants to stop us. Um, so has my life continued to have really hard times? Yes, of course, like all of us, I have times of desolation, loneliness, grief, fear, regret, contrition. Life still brings it on and it hits me hard sometimes. I won't lie, but I feel God's presence in all of that because knowing my gifts are good helps me know that God is kind that he generously poured himself into me when he created me, and he doesn't leave me. And how wonderful to design me in ways that bring me joy and help me serve with energy and excellence. So that knowledge helps me carry my crosses with a lot more confidence, because I'm more sure than I ever was before that I'm loved. 
that my gifts are to be used, that he meets me in those gifts to bless others, to bring him glory, and to give me joy. That's the way he makes us. So hear this for yourselves, my friends, because this kind of joy makes our crosses easier to bear. It, it makes us more courageous and willing to pick them up, to unite our sufferings with his in that redemptive, beautiful way that then floods our lives with grace, okay? So that joy can remind us every day that when God created you, it was not a random or careless act. Please hear this. It was steeped in love, beauty, and purpose. And in embracing your God-given gifts, you can be set free to serve with confidence and help others to do so as well. Okay, so if you need therapy, healing of deep wounds, please do that work. If you need unbound ministry, if you need anything else, by all means, do those things. This isn't the whole thing. But this is an important element we don't talk about enough, which is just knowing that you can be energized and blessed by your own gifts, that that is the beauty of God. And you can help others to, by being and living that out, just like we live out the life of faith, we can draw others to God. We can also draw others to their authentic being. We can inspire others with their unique and unrepeatable lives and purposes to live more authentically, to live with more joy. We impact each other, we influence like walking tabernacles, the, the more we embrace the goodness of God in us, okay? So this awareness can really help us turn the lights on in the church. Banish darkness, false shame, the ugliness of the enemy in his lies, so that we can start to unshackle our greatest gifts and become that bright city on a hill. Remember that Christ calls us to be. That's part of why each one of us is unique and unrepeatable. There's a light in you that is unlike any other. All right? You are wonderfully made, my friends. Feel free to reach out to me. I'm at lisa at wonderfullymade139.com. And please pray for me. I am praying for you, too. I really appreciate your prayers. God bless you.